very good evening to one and all. Center of Excellence in Safety Engineering and Analytics welcomes all its dear participants to week 40 of weekly talk on safety engineering, management, and analytics. The event is conducted under Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa, which commemorates 75 years of India's engineering. begin this function with this beautiful sloga Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jodurgamaya, Mrityoma Amritam Kramaya, praying to the Almighty to lead us from ignorance to truth, from darkness to light, and from death to immortality. Let me welcome our dignitaries onto this virtual dais. We have Professor J. Maiti, who is the chairman of COACA, Professor O. B. Krishna, who is the convener of the event, and our expert speaker for the day. Mr. Atanu Chatterjee. Atanu Chatterjee is presently the corporate head, health, safety, health, and environment at Texmaco Rail and Engineering Limited. He formerly served as general manager OHS at Jintar Steel and Power Limited for about three and a half years. He has also worked with Tata Steel Jamshed Port for about 22 years and Tata Steel Processing and Distribution Limited which is a group a company of Tata Steel for seven years to lead the corporate safety function in Pan-India. From 2007 to 2011, he headed the safety department at KPO to drive safety during the pre-construction and design stages. His career as a safety professional started in the year 2004 when DuPont was engaged with Tata Steel. Prior to moving into the safety profession, he was in charge of projects and construction activities in Tata Steel's engineering division for about 16 years. He is a strategist state with competency in devising and implementing safety management systems for maintaining sound safety processes in the organization. He is a professional with, with people management skills and the capability to manage change with ease. He was a part-time faculty at the Industrial Safety Institute in Jamshedpur for about five years as a subject matter expert in the construction safety. We are very privileged to have you today with us, sir. Now, I kindly request Professor Krishna to kindly welcome our expert speaker for the day. It's really great to welcome Matan. Of course, most of the things you told <laughs> Uh, Sreen, but I'll tell something which you're not mentioned. See, I remember when I was in Tata Steel in 2005, we were looking up, looking for the, the good uh, functional experts to come to safety. Different functions, who are specialists in different functions. So then the vice president of uh, Engineering projects has nominated Atanu Chatterjee to our safety function. He is the only person in, in Tata Steel who was formally trained one year on construction safety. With construction management, construction uh, project management experience, with construction safety trained one year, he was looking after the engineering projects, guiding all the engineering projects. With this background, we have sent him to the Greenfield project, at that time called KPO, Kalinga Projects, uh, uh, Bodhisa. Now it is called Tata Steel uh, K. So he was managing the Greenfield project. Greenfield project management is very, very difficult. Owners will not let their lands to go disturbances from the owner, land land owners, disturbances from the community, many things happens. With all those odds, he has to take the safety requirements. Many people around, the, the workers who come around, untrained people, untrained people around that uh, Kalinga project, JK Road. With all those odds, these are the people who have made uh, Tata Steel Kalinga initially successful. Of course, later he was moved to uh, manufacturing 
units of associated company tspdl it's a it's a associated company which uh, he was uh, uh, heading the corporate safety of that manufacturing plants then he moved to a jindal plant so he has got vast experience in different fields right from the engineering projects managing the whole 3 million plant at that time uh, greenfield brownfield work in the tspdl and uh, uh, general jsw then finally now he has come to a uh, texmeco heading the corporate safety a lot of texmeco he is also doing great work of putting the good safety management systems so he has got overall experience in all the fields so you will not get a better speaker than him to share his experiences to the various participants now now he is talking about the construction safety but he can talk on any subject in the safety so i welcome formally uh, mr atanu chatterjee to this uh, weekend talk and i hope all the audience will be benefited with his talk atanu it is to you thank you sir uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to to speak on this weekends and i am very much thankful to dr obi krishna actually who taught me safety uh, during my stay at tata steels he taught me safety in skill building safety in wheel building initially he taught us everybody to how to build the wheel first then skills and then the safety journey started from 2004 onwards so thank you once again sir uh, this is the outcome of your initiatives and drives today i am sharing one of the important favorite subjects the safety from conceptual stage safety from the design stage in construction industry is the screen visible yeah yes, yeah sir. yeah yes okay. sir vijay perfect now before going i do the subjects uh, let me share one safety pause uh, to uh, share the context of the subjects this actually picture this is very iconic picture it's a rockefeller center which was constructed in 1932 it's a in america new york uh, this structure you can see these people the workers they are sitting on the steel beam of 70 storied building 70 storied building that time you can think over the safety what it shows in america it was not like that that days the during lunch time they are sitting rest, taking rest and taking food over this beam which is 70 storied now come to the my subjects safety from conceptual stage in construction and projects and overview any industries any industries life cycles comprising of this following steps the first is before building any industries the conception should start first conception then design then constructions then use for purpose operations maintenance repair then if required decommissioning repurposing and finally if some new project is coming then demolitions so these are the stages of the life cycles of any industry so first we need to assess and incorporate safety consideration from each and every stage that this is this slides is very important which one of the my favorite slides as the life cycle of any industry progresses we told the conception basic design design constructions uh, layout design maintenance demolishing the life cycles the ability of influences it is decreasing we can we can incorporate safety in a nice way if we could incorporate in the conception stage in the basic design stage 
But if we think that during operation and during maintenance, we, we will incorporate safety, then it will be very, very difficult. And the scope is decreasing. At the same time, the cost, if we incorporate safety from the initial stage, the cost will be less. And if we think, no, we will we'll incorporate safety from design, construction, and a maintenance operation, the cost will be huge and high. I can give you one example, live example, what we have learned in Tata Steels. We ordered many equipments, meals, from uh, Danieli and different uh, abroad. The meals cost huge. And that time, Tata Steels, there is a drive was going on that is called positive isolates, the log out, tag out. This, when we have seen that during the commissioning of equipments, if we incorporate the log out, tag out of Loto, that improvisation cost is huge. Then we decided why not this uh, log out, tag out or positive isolation concepts to start be beginning of the contract. And afterwards, we had given this contract to the different suppliers. And then it OEMs, all these things, everything, it's not required any improvisations at the sites. And that makes the difference. So that is the live examples of how we can incorporate safety from the initial stage. And influence and its impact is a mirror image. Go to my next slides. In life cycle, safety should be considered from each stage. Safety from the construction, safety from the use, safety should be designed from the inspection purpose. The design aspect to be considered in maintenance, repair, even including demolitions. Everywhere, the safety has to be incorporated. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. And there, if we think in that direction, there will be different benefits. Lot of benefits are there, reduction of in damage property, elimination of potential hazards, more efficient, effective risk management, reduction of operational maintenance. Now come to the construction industries projects. The today's the subject is exclusively on construction projects. The construction industry is an important indicator of any development of country. It creates investment opportunities across various related sectors. It contributes economical growth, approximately 10% in developing countries, GNP or GDP. It's a huge major employment generator. So construction industries must. This is the, say you can say, the parameter or index the, of developed countries. But at the same time, it correlates with huge number of job-related accidents because construction industries is having a lot of threats, a lot of potential of accidents because of is a labor-intensive nature. It is the continuously changing working environments. Now it is a subside structure below the foundations, below the ground level. Today it will be on ground and tomorrow it will be in superstructures and maybe 10 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter, 80 meters. So it is continuously changing the working environments. And where you will find the involvement of several different agencies. Somebody is from electrical, mechanical, civil, instrumentation, operations, commissions, migrant laborers. So different agencies are involved. And the employing of migrant labor from very low wage economy where the inculcation of safety is really a question mark. Now in study, uh, if we, it's a source from the Times of India, there's a news came 20th November 2017. The study results in 2017, about 48,000 workers die in India due to the occupational accidents every year. Where? The construction industry contributes 38 fatalities every day. It is about 24.2% of occupational fatalities. So that's the today's focus is constructions. In British Safety Council Chief Executive Mr. Mike Robinson in that topic says, the India was similar position to Britain 50 years back in terms of accident rate. 
and at present the overall workplace death is 20 times higher than UK. So we need to look into these aspects. We are in the uh, developing, we are growing, but more importantly, we need to focus more, more on the safety aspects. Philip Fele Hellender examined that 739 workers' death he analyzed. Out of 739 workers in UK, he analyzed the following categories. We know the maximum fatalities happen in the construction industry is fall from height, fall from roof, fall from scaffolds, fall from ladders, fall from structures, even falling of objects and materials from the height over workmen, transporting equipments, moving equipment, material handling equipments, and then excavation work and others. The five top role, top players of the accidents, this contributes maximum. So 52% is a fall from height. It shows European Journal of Scientific Research in UK. Now, how safety aspects in the organizations? Who might be adversely affected by the construction activities in case of any eventualities? First, in case of any eventualities, any disaster, any catastrophic, the community will be affected. The visitors of the workplace will be affected. The workforce, including contractors, subcontractors will be affected. And the last but not least, the management staff who are directly responsible for the safety at workplace, they will be affected severely. So some reason, some duties and responsibilities, accountabilities are there. So provide, maintain safe plants, structures, environments, handling, storage, training, safety of the workforce and their uh, health aspects of the workforce provide adequate facility of the welfare. So this is the responsibility of the management to fulfill upon. Now, there are many challenges in the construction industries. We know there is a huge socio-economical problem. We know there is a incompetent manpower is really question mark in construction activities. Environmental impact assessments, this uh, while carrying out any projects and then the, many environmental impacts are there. Safety awareness is an issue because the when the manufacturing plant we have seen the routine activities people are used to and they are well trained by means of practices, by means of executions. But in constructions, there is a every day there is a changing of the work ambience, work work front. The training infrastructures, this is a question mark. Whether we can provide adequate training, adequate infrastructures are there, social hazards at site. Labor camps, people are coming from 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers. We don't have requisite labor camps everywhere. It's an unorganized sector. Most of the construction activities, not every every uh, construction activities, many construction activities are unorganized sectors. And there is a huge cultural gaps amongst the workforce. So these are the challenges of construction industry rather than manufacturing industry. Now, these slides I put exclusively for constructions, project sites. We discussed that time, uh, this was the life cycles influence. Now, this is the influence of during construction phase. The ability of influence of safety, if we start from the design stage, there will be less impact, there will be less costly in the, in the in course of time. So first, Ability of influence of safety is design phase. Then gradually it increases in pre-construction, construction and startup. So ability of influence decreases in life cycles of the construction sites. So what do we need to do? Whatever the safety consideration discussed amongst the management, among the designers and incorporated the design stage itself. The three CS concepts of effective implementation. The overarching principle says as you work to achieve safety in design stage, you need to consult, coordinate, and cooperate with your management or client and other stakeholders in the designs or conception stage of the projects. Safety will definitely come. Everybody 
need to be in the same alignment. Client, designer, principal contractor, and subcontract. Everybody should be in the loop and consult, coordinate, and cooperate. Then safety will be definitely will be achievable. Now, few steps. There are six steps we have uh, to ensure the health and safety in design set. There are six steps we have kept in the slides. The first step, engage with your contractor client, research and brainstorming, then understand the risk throughout the life cycles, use of checklists and test certificates, provide information, cascade information amongst everybody, and finally review. I will touch upon these six steps one by one. How to engage with your client? First step is engage with your customers or client to get a thorough brief about the project. Consider all possible extreme conditions to accommodate. We discussed in the past. To identify the hazards which is involved in the construction phases that need to be addressed. To identify the potential health and safety risk and measures also during the activities or the process which will be undertaken. To design the project with most effective technological as well as engineering aspects. This is the basic things. The first, with your client, with your customers, this needs to be discussed upfront. The second step, research and brainstorm. We always say that better to organize a workshop through a multidisciplinary skill and knowledge sets of groups, peoples. This, this workshop, everything will be discussed. The clear goal, leadership team, good understanding of the project activities, even including the human behaviors. And the workshop need technical knowledge of products, materials which will be used, and the safe construction techniques, how that will be carried out during the stay of the projects. Regular meetings and proper recording and distribution of information. This is the second step. Third step. Third step is risk assessment. Sir always told, Mr. Obikisna told, until and unless you measure, you cannot achieve these things. So that is risk assessment matrix. So risk assessments, if we put safety, then hazards and risks will go out. So in safety, hazard and risk, risk will out. So the, all the activities, all the serious threats must be put in place. This is called risk matrix. And it is in terms of severity of the injury, say so superficial, minor, moderate, major, and catastrophic. And see the likelihood of the, consider the likelihood, it's very unlikely, unlikely, possibly could happen, likely to happen, or very likely to happen. Put these things in the matrix and then see where it is coming. It is low, it is very low, fantastic. It is moderate, some thoughts to be given. It is high. Oh, some management program has to be taken place. It is critical. Then decide how to proceed. Involve everybody in these high and critical aspects. The hierarchy of control. We have discussed that needs to be controlled. How? If possible, eliminate the hazards. But it is very difficult. Hazards will be there in the construction. If it is not possible to remove the hazards, then minimize at least. And minimize, we start with substitutions, either wholly or partly, with safer alternatives. If we see there is a chemicals, can it be done through some less impact things? If we see that it is a uh, uh, high voltage requirements, can it be brought down to low voltage? So substitute the hazards, isolate the hazards, do some engineering control. This is the minimization. If it is not at all possible, all these things, then the last resort is administrative control and the personal protective. Develop methods, work procedures, and, and communications, training. These are all administrative control. And the, at last but not least, the PPEs. PPEs, it is also very, very essential for construction site because the category of people 
Now I can give you one example. Why? What? What does it mean? Safety in design. You can see earlier the AC compressor. It is put on the height on the charger or the projected slabs. But nowadays people are seen the during maintenance. It is very difficult. Even it is also evident that AC units fallen down from the charger or from the projected slabs. So that is why it is required AC units to be located at ground level rather than at height. Similarly, if you see the right side photo earlier, windows open outward. Now people seen that it is very difficult to maintain or clean cleaning. So better keep the windows open inward rather than outward. I think it makes some sense. Now the step four. Step four, in construction site, we must use checklist or test certificate. Designer, development incorporates safety aspects based on calculations. What type of structure, what factor of safety, factor of safety should be given? Designer should consider the interaction of components. The material, when used in combinations, they should not create any risk. So interaction matrix to be done by the designer. Designer must approve the codes, the standards, the rules and regulations. Now come to the step five, which is very important. Record all information, including design consideration of H risks. All, all specific safety notes on plans. Health safety file within the project file. In health safety file, the result of testings, change in design, safety data sheets, OEM manuals, any specific correspondence with OEMs, that needs to be filed and that needs to be effectively communicated. Design safety report, method statements, and pre-construction review report, post-construction review reports. The step six is very important. Ultimately, what in the step six, review the whole process, what have been done in the projects. What can be taken forward into next future design projects? Designer understood what went well, what went wrong. So he can capture what worked well. He can capture unexpected health and safety problem, what went wrong. How the unexpected health and issues are dealt with. How might be avoided in the future projects? All these things is a it's the Bible for him for upcoming projects, next projects. And on completion constructions, all the defect reports, if some incidents happens, incident investigation reports, information gathering on modification suit at sites. What are the users faces difficulties in the uh, operational maintenance? Record all these things. And what are the deviation from the standards incorporated at the site, executed at the site, all things needs to be record, recorded. Now, the strategies, the safety strategies at the planning stage, the design philosophy, the designer must see the design implications, design calculations, and it must be shared with the execution teams. What factor of safety is given in here and there? Dealing hazard identification risk assessment, and that has to be validated by the designer. Design all interface relationship, construction, maintenance, material specification. The second is contracting strategy. This is one of the today's call. Contractor evaluation process. Contract management system. In Tata Steel, there is a robust drive taking place in Tata Steel contractor, contractor management. We cannot pass the buck to contractor say, it, it is your baby. Contractor is working for us. We need to see the contractor is capable enough or not. The contractor, identify the contractors who are compatible with our expectations, whether this contractor is capable enough or not. If not, then please don't engage this contractor for any high risk jobs. For high risk and threat potential jobs, engage the good contractors. He might may not be L1 or L2. It can go L3 and L4. Critically evaluate their capabilities. 
prior to their engagement very important and if you leave it to purchase department or procurement department it will be very difficult as a manager projects as a uh, as it uh, uh, head safety head projects the team has to be critically evaluate whether the contractors are capable enough prior to their engagement the team has to be some some strategy regarding safety goals what will be our safety goals what is our safety principles what will be the our standard procedures what will be the roles and accountabilities of individual in every departments so that is the strategy has to be finalized then safety will be achieved now i will go i will share some case studies when i was in tata steel and thereafter in kalinganagar tata steel kalinganagar earlier it is called kpo kalinganagar project to research what sir has brief little early i will share two case studies the practical demonstrations sir the past three first is the pre construction safety management at tata steel k site uh, we engaged we had took advice of do point tata steel engaged do point and then there's a a huge transformation of the cultural takes place at tata steel kalinganagar kalinganagar project sites the first case studies this is the kalinganagar google map you can see there are peripheral industries there are jacobra real estate visha jindal steel mesco drpl nichal nilachal ispar nigam limited and the blue border is tata steels the plot 1 and the plot 2 now we discussed about plot one where the project execution started from 2004 uh, onwards for unfortunately it was kept held for some incidents and then it started from 2006 2007 the plot one before going for the construction activities we discussed the review of pre construction plans all the layout drawings made available all the power and utilities where the power will be there where the utilities like water uh, this electrics all the utilities were put in the drawing all the construction facilities say canteen drinking water first aid centers all the construction facilities are marked in the drawing and it is accessible to all so that people can use that one effectively before carrying out any executions tata steel kalinganagar rolled out many safety standards and the standards are well communicated it was incorporated in the contract document initially the cd was circulated to all contractors then there is a training institute training hall nttf run by nttf all the workers undergone the training both safety induction training and job specific training it took 2 to 3 years time the layout of plant layout where the materials will be stored where contractors will be uh, <coughs> engage where contractor store will be there where the equipment will be parked where the logistics where what is the access of the sites what is the egress from the sites how the people will come how the people will go so that there should not be any interface issues where the security gate will be located how many security gate will be there everything was planned and the construction safety resource according to the scope safety induction orientation training center requirements identification of passes and badges so that any unauthorized person cannot enter into the plant what about what will be the required pps contractor safety resource required for the safely executions and whether these resources are good safe that has to be also verified the monthly safety topic this month excavation job is going on so excavation campaign was going on throughout the man this month there will be a vehicle movements massive vehicle movements so the vehicle movements safety campaign was like this way the strategy was developed and thereafter daily took toolbox talk meeting with the workforce to motivate them to engage them effectively 
transportation to and from the construction area, tools and equipments, minimum standards, regulations, safety laws, accident investigations, everything was put in place before actual ex execution started. I can give you some construction infrastructures of the that time Kalinganagar, Tata Steel Kalinganagar site. We put these things in the drawing and practice practically at site, the construction yard, the batching plant, the raw material storage yard, steel storage yard, fabrication yard, fabrication material storage yard, bar bending schedule areas, equipment yard, incoming material section, different things are put in the drawing and actually it was placed at the site. The construction power water, all the site offices for our employee, our Tata Steel employees, consultant, even those two, suppliers, vendors, contractors, the quota cabin was put in place. The amenities, toilets, washroom, canteen, drinking water facilities, everything was provided before actual ex execution started. Firefighting, initially we took support from the local government. Thereafter, first aid station and firefighting station was built. Security office, approach, access road, construction road, we have seen these things. You can see this in the photo. Everything was put in place at Kalinganagar. This is required for any, for greenfield, at least for greenfield projects. This is must. You can see this drawing. This is a layout drawing of plot one, where everything, this, everything was put in the drawing. It was marked and it was displayed at every strategic locations so that people can see, people can view it. And then the right side, it was marked. What is this? What stands for this yellow, red? Everything was there. This crystal clear layout in the drawing sheets. And it was displayed at several locations. We developed many safety standards. We discussed initially these standards were rolled out. The excavation working at height, fall protections, welding, gas cutting storage and handling of gas cylinders, demolition, dismantling, scaffolding, erection and its inspection, material handling, rigging equipment, and portable hand tools. These eight, nine standards we initially first stage we rolled out and we also keep track of implementations. The safety standards, it was across all level of employees, contractor, distribution of hard copy, soft copy, and training through NTTF. This is a continuous process. Now, we come to the, the case studies of two. We'll share the implementation of safety measures at Tata Steel Kalinganagar sites. How the safety measures are effectively implemented. The World Steel Survey in 2011, World Steel Survey, uh, the based on fatality, they put some categories. In one state survey, it was shown the moving machineries, material handling, the contributes major. The falling objects contribute next to this moving machinery, fall from height. So these things, they have categorically uh, put in place. And based on that, in Tata Steel Kalinganagar site, we took these initiatives. The material handling and working height, these two things we took very seriously and all those things are put in place. In material handling, uh, we started these things, monitoring and control of overloading of tracks and dampers, which usually takes place at several areas. No overloading of tracks and its condition of the vehicle should be good. The trailer, which was carrying materials for structurals, reinforcement rods, all these tra trailers are supported with side props so that material cannot fall over the persons. So, or even outside the campus where there will be community reactions. Practice of chain lashings, necessary fixtures, bracket, disciples. This is called the load security. And load security was very much focused during the initial stage of Kalinganagar Strata Steel sites. We put all these drives in three categories, foolproof, fail safe, and fail soft. We'll discuss 
on this topic. What is what does it mean by foolproof, fails of and fails of? Then working at height, we ne we did not take any comp we did not compromise anything else on working at height. Fall from height, injury due to so at a, we initially rolled out the safety standard working at height. So it has to be adhered. No com no it's zero tolerance safety standards. Standard working platform will show some snapshots how we have initiated. Standard working platform, lifeline, use of safety, double linear harness, fall registers, safety nets, compliance to scaffolding standards, issue of sca scaffolding pass, all these things we'll touch upon in the subsequent slides. Heavy vehicles. Helperless driving was initiated initially at Tata Steel's and thereafter same thing was cascaded at Tata Steel KPO sites. Because we have seen the helpers are used to drive these vehicles rather than the drivers. So helperless driving initiative was started. Then reflective stickers, all the vehicles, all the dumpers, all the trailers, heavy vehicles, reflective stickers was put in place so that even at night it can be vis visible from the long distance. Separate walkways for pedestrian and for the vehicle movements. Flagman to guide the vehicle movements. Access control through physical barriers. Mandatory use of high visibility jackets, fluorescent jackets. Restroom. In Hydra, in several incidents took place at Tata Steel earlier in past Hydra incidents. So run protection guard, run over protection guard and side guard in Hydra also implemented. Illumination level, you mm -hmm. wouldn't believe Tata Steel, Kalingana side, the, when we move to the sides, there's a fast job is to put the high mass tower. Around 200 high mass tower was put in place. First 50, then 50. So we believe higher the illumination, higher the safety, higher the productivity. So if we illuminate the area, the safety and the productivity will be increased. Heavy vehicle fitness checking through weekly audits. Now we talk about what does it mean by foolproof, fail safe and fail soft. Foolproof is the first choice. Foolproof means it eliminates the root cause so that even a fool will not able to commit any mistakes. So they can be done providing any mechanisms or automation. Fail safe it plan in such a way that if situation arises, the effect will be zero. Person, we may fall from height, but we'll be safe if we use the safety harness or safety net. This is called fail safe approach. Fail safe, fail soft. If this such situation arises, the effect can be minimized. An example, a person may fall while driving two wheelers. But he will be he will get hurt less if he is wearing safety helmets. Now I am giving some you uh, examples of foolproof. You could see the three pin flag. Even a fool cannot use wrongly the three pin flag. The uh, the VGA adapter, the RCA components, the high density the HDMI plug. So it. Nobody can make any mistakes. It is designed in that way. So that is, it is called foolproof design. We should think in that direction, how we can go ahead with the foolproof design. Now I am giving the photographs, actual, the site photographs, how we have implemented in Tata Steel Cutting Anagar site. You could see the trailer, the carrying the structures, ISMB, ISMC channel, beams. The prop supports are there in both sides. So that in case of any turning or any speed or any undulated ground, it will not fall from the trailer bed. And chain lashings. Along with chain lashings, the prop support will be there. Chain may get broke. Chain may get damaged. If the prop is there, nothing will happen. The right side shots. The pedestrian. Nobody can walk in the path where the vehicle movement is there. Segregated the path. The workers, employees, everybody will move in that the restricted, barricaded area. Next slides. We had discussed 
the reflective stickers over dumper, every dumper, the high visibility stickers was put in place so that it from the after sunset everybody could see from the long distance to avoid any eventualities, any accidents. The inspection, vehicle inspection was the robust process was there so that the good condition dumper trailer can be deployed at site. We discussed about the runover protection guards. Hydra, runover cases, many incidents happened in past. But Hydras. Material handling we discussed in Tata Steel, Jamshedpur and Tata Steel, Kalinganagar site. The use of mobile cranes and tower cranes also used to avoid any lifting hazards of heavy materials. The tower crane also used and the heavy use mobile crane also be used. If we could see the next photo, the working at height, the major threats, we to have seen the person need to go at height and need to do the welding job. We discussed and then we have decided to put some platform, some cage kind of platform, so that person can work over there com comfortably. We use the lifeline, the vertical lifeline, so that in case of any mistakes, it will lock automatically. The safety nets and the, you could see the right side photo, the safety nets were provided, so that in case of fall of material or fall of person, he will be remain over there in the nets. The scaffoldings. These drives takes place in Jamshed, from Jamshedpur itself in 2005 onwards. The, we this, to have seen the substandard scaffolds was used by contractor, even by our internally, departmentally used our substandard scaffolds. There are a lot of drives taken place. How to uh, how to implement the standard scaffolds. Then we have seen the standard scaffold, the pipe scaffold, conventional scaffold, how to build standard scaffold. Then we have seen the BSL, British Kaplock scaffolds, the safest scaffold. Then we have seen the Doka scaffolds implemented by LNT, LNT and Malaysia joint venture. They introduced first in Tata Steel's the Doka scaffolds. Fantastic, very lightweight. 25 mm dia pipes and they carrying out these projects. Entire project was to Doka scaffolds. So scaffolds takes place. Scaffolds took a lot of uh, lot of stress takes place. But at, at the end of the day, the scaffolds standard scaffold was implemented. We could see the dim practical demonstrations in the sites, both mobile scaffolds as well as fixed scaffolds. The scaffold director need to learn. They need to be they need to be uh, expertised how to build the scaffolds. We put these uh, models, domo mock-up scaffolds. The, the ladder, the side supports, the base plate, the handrail, mid rail, tow guard. Every thing was there, and it was and provided training to every employees engaged in the projects and gradually they learned the standard scaffolds. It is seen that while carrying out the job at, say, roof ceiling, roof heights, 4 meter, 3.5 meter, people used to, people use these uh, ladders. In Ladders is not safe for the carrying out these activities at roof slabs. We put these things, the mobile scaffolds. The mobile scaffolds can cater any height inside campus, inside building. So it was very much implemented over there. The scaffolds, there is a, uh, actually uh, in engineering project side, this initiative takes, took place. The typical flow scheme and clearance obtained procedures for erecting scaffold. Nobody can do scaffold, nobody can erect scaffold until and un unless it is approved by Tata Steel or Tata Steel consultant. So while while carrying out any scaffolds, the contractor will get clearance from Tata Steel or consultant. Then they will start erecting the scaffolds. 
and contractor will check as per the checklist and they will offer to Tata Steel or consultant. Tata Steel consult, Tata Steel or consultant will check if they okay it, then the scaffold is safe for use and it has to be registered in the scaffolds and hand over to users. If the Tata Steel or consultant will find that no, it is not made as per our standards, the gain contacted will rectify is and the same flowchart will continue. We have made thousands of stickers. The stickers put that do not use, no access because the scaffold is, is not safe, safe for use, the identification, this kind of tag, we made a huge number so that it can be put over the scaffolds and people could see whether the scaffold is safe or unsafe. This is the Kalinganagar photo site, Tata Steel Kalinganagar sites, where we have seen the high tension over a line and we put a lot of goal posts so that in case of vehicle movements, in case of mobile crane mm -hmm. movements, it will not get electrocuted. So goal post was made. It is very, very important and required. So that's the, our second case studies. And I have finished my talk today. If you have any questions, we have another three, four minutes time. Any questions? So thank you very much. And this constructions after completion, it is a successful handover to the client for carrying on these things. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any question, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for this nice session. Sir, we, we have several questions in the chat box. I am taking one by one, sir. Sir, yeah. is there any literature or organization which keeps the track of all accident types classification happening in construction site in India? Mainly, he is talking about some database is available for construction site in India or not. Yes, it is there. Uh, data, how many accidents takes place in the construction industries you are talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mainly construction industries data. Okay. So how accident is happening? What are the causes? What are the consequences? So, I have uh, shared these things in 2017 case. We need to check whether the latest status in 2020 or 21. I think it is available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the next question is, what type of safety studies are carried out in construction industries to minimize the hazards? Studies are being carried out to minimize the hazards. Yes, See, sir. in construction... The same procedures to all the activities in the, first you need to develop the SWP, safe working procedure, wherein all the activities need to be captured. This actually is nicely done by LNT. LNT gives a construction safety manual where all the activities, starting from canteen uh, installations to a extreme end, the SWP or manual has to be developed. So in safe working procedure, you will find all the activities. And in all the activities, you need to mention, you need to do the HIRA, hazard identification and risk assessments. It, you can refer uh, the LNT uh, safe working procedure manual, wherein you can get uh, some flavor of these things and how the things can be addressed, how the issues, how the threats can be addressed. I have that manual in uh, the LNT, uh, uh, they shared during our projects at Kalinga, Tata Steel Kalinga. This is a nice document. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the, now, sir, the next question is, sir, uh, in spite of various safety precautions, briefing, and available PPE, how can the attitude and mind state towards safety of the workers on ground may be improved? See, yes. the first belief is nobody wants to get hurt. Nobody wants to die in the plant. It is our responsibility. It is the responsibility of the management. It is the responsibility of line, jar, line managers. They need to take this job in spirit. Then they, they should believe if something goes wrong, if anybody met with an accident, 
it is my baby it is my cup of tea that culture needs to be developed that mindset needs to be developed even today during our discussion at my text micro site i uttered all these points if something goes wrong i am responsible and accountable so that culture needs to be built up is a cultural issue i i think we are in the right track there is a huge transformation people are taking these things in a spirited way yes sir yes sir thank you sir and with your permission i am taking another question uh, what type of fitness protocols of construction workers should follow prior to permitting to work in construction activities like extra vision work at height etc see i told you very uh, from the very beginning that before engaging contractor that other than safety induction training the job specific training must be undergone we have lot of materials in construction site the workers the line manager should take this initiative up front they are the my workers they need to undergo this there is a not one day training it's a one hour 45 minutes they need to be sensitized on these things they need to understand they need to know the subject the excavation this hazards this land will collapse the excavation slope should be maintained that if there is a water logging before engaging the uh, 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 some pit see that there is no electrocution takes place so the, the line manager has to communicate effectively in a spirit so that nobody can get hurt in the construction site yes sir yes sir thank you sir now thank i would you. like to i would like to invite professor krishna to provide vote of thanks to our expert speaker over to you sir good uh very good talk katanu sir so thank your, you your talk abc abc of uh, construction safety right sir. from the green project you being the real construction engineer could feel and we could see the passion in your the tone and your body language that is how uh, that is how you were you were chosen in the in your initial career you are continuing your passion thank you very much and uh, persons like you you are uh, a pan india candidates so across across india you are uh, collaborating and uh, i also want to uh, uh, congratulate all the participants on this day 50th national safety day of india both march which is formed in the recognition of national safety council so we all we all as as mr satan chatterjee said we we all should own take the responsibility of uh, safety of our uh, family society the organization everywhere thank you thank you thank you atanu for uh, uh, supporting our weekend talks with your experience we'll we'll be taking your help from for our coe coe sc the center of excellence in safety engineering and analytics he is the he is the center formed by the center of uh, central central government at iit kharagpur and this is the first of its kind across the world Which, which is dealing safety analytics so in the next next some after some talks we'll bring uh, good talks on safety analytics also sir because that is the order of the day yeah people should people should understand how to use analytics in the safety field in the one of the most problem is we don't have data safety data the data which we are talking is not real data for the 
doing analytics we look for big data correct so it correct pusivoi will has many models how to create big data so we'll bring all those informations in front of you sometime thank you thank you participants for uh, i know most of you are seeing the uh, youtube uh, uh, update uploaded uh, videos this video will be uploaded in the youtube so you can see at any time that's why most of most of you are preferring to see it good i also thank the moderators i have seen saavik ashish and uh, mom mitra from tata steel you are all supporting it so thank you all and we'll see you next week with a specialist from academics and thank you and good day and the session is uh, completed and thank you thank you thanks a lot to all of you thank you very much